My dad did stuff to me when I was eight. And, uh... I thought he must be right. I must have wanted it. And then... I grew up. And I thought every kid wanted it. Getting caught was the best thing that ever happened to me. But even now, after six years rehab, six years spent struggling towards understanding who I was and what I'd done, even now I could slip back. So the question is, can we survive in the real world? Can we go back out there and make a go of our lives? Because if rehab doesn't work, if we can't change, then there's nowhere for us to go. So, I'm not just leaving prison. I'm leaving prison on a mission. But not for a single second of a single day for the rest of my life. Will I ever put a little kid at risk again? Golden rule. The big one. I can never go near children. Charlie Webb. Nice and... Date, name, inmate number and time in.
there was some concern at the supervisor's office about whether or not something had happened. You were expected to arrive at four o'clock. There were school kids on the bus. I got off and walked the whole way. It took me three and a half hours. Why don't you have a seat? May I call you Charlie? Charlie. What's that camera for? I'll be recording all of our sessions. No one will see the tapes but you and me. You can call me Emma. Emma. Tell me how you felt on the bus. OK. Nick. Nick's my psychologist. He was my psychologist at Grenton. He wouldn't have done that. He wouldn't have made notes. You know, he always said, um, no secrets, Charlie. Well, I'll read them to you if you like. Charlie Webb, 30, Schedule 1 Sex Offender, Tuesday the 17th of September, Session 1. See, that's the, that's the problem, isn't it? That first bit, sex offender. You know, if you could just take that out, you might be able to just to see past it, you know, for a second to the human being. You may even like me. It's not my job to like you. It's my job to help you. But why don't I tell you a bit about me? You're a psychologist, trainee, probably your name's Emma. What time does this session finish? This isn't a prison, Charlie. You're here as a volunteer, but the centre has rules and the rules can't be broken. If you break our trust, it's your own future you're throwing away, is that understood? What trust? You'll have to earn that. <laughs> you, should, uh, you should make a note of that. By the way, when I called you a trainee, that was a passive-aggressive outburst? I am a trainee. Well, you've never, you've never done this before. I'm a fully qualified clinical psychologist. Sex offenders before, no. Well, why have they given me a trainee? Because they say you're doing exceptionally well. And perhaps they're breaking me in gently. Because of that? Go on. It stops thoughts. I put a um, rubber band around my wrist. And whenever I have a deviant thought, I say, stop it, and I snap the rubber band. Not to punish myself, just to break the thought pattern. And then I say a prayer. I say, dear God, please let me treasure and respect this person. Uh, it's probably all in the report. It means much more to me to hear it in your own words, Charlie. Go on. Um, well, I've never really been religious, but I said that in a prayer over and over and over again for months and months and months. Um, and then the thoughts got less and less and less, and one day they just stopped completely. And that was three years ago, December the 12th, on a Tuesday. <laughs> and with the children on the bus, you had no thoughts then? No. I didn't even need to snap the band. There's no cure for paedophilia, Charlie. I mean, generally speaking... Generally speaking, a Schedule 1 sex offender is capable of reoffending at any moment. Given the opportunity to sexually abuse a child, the only thing that stops them, stops us, is the programme. When you take away the support, and the routine and the plastic ban, we're as much of a threat as we ever were. There's no cure for paedophilia, Charlie, because paedophilia isn't a sickness. Let's be absolutely clear. You were a swimming coach, Charlie. You spent months, years, insinuating yourself carefully into people's lives, earning their trust. You then had sexual intercourse, oral, anal, and vaginal, with three girls aged between seven and 12. You chose to do what you did, which means that you can choose not to. And all we can do at the center is help you to make that choice.
Charlie Webb. Yeah. 30 minutes of hot water left before breakfast. No smoking, no drinking, no pornography. If you go out and sign up, remember the 11 p.m. curfew. Any questions? Clear? Clear. Sex offenders register. You sign within seven days. What, so I just turn up and ask to sign a book? It's no book. You're just giving your name at the local police station. We need a recent photo, proof of address, and something with your date of birth on it. I've marked down the address and put the bus routes on the back. Oh, I don't, uh, I don't think I should use buses. Um, kids use buses. I'm a probation officer, not a travel agent. How you get there is up to you. Oh, uh, sorry. <clears throat> Maybe if I went mid-morning, then they'd be at school. Could go mid-morning. Just get there. I will. Stay out. Yeah. Sweet freedom. Sweet freedom. Think of the outside world as a prison yard, only bigger. Gets easier, I promise. Thanks. Are you alright? No, I was mugged. A man ran off with my bag outside Tesco. Did you go did you go, did you look at him? Did you go look at him? I come out of the supermarket and he ran up to me, it all happened so quickly. He just punched me in the face, right in my face. Well, you're you're probably in shock. People in this world I can't believe just. Would you like a cup of tea? Next. 
You go for you go for. I can't find my purse. This, this lady's yeah. This this lady's been mugged and she she's got a baby, and there's uh, some bloke. She probably needs a cup of tea. Actually. Are you a witness? Pardon? You a witness? No. Husband, partner, friend, no. relative? No. Name? Uh, Charlie. Surname? Well. One B or two? Two. How am I gonna get home? Look here. Take. Uh... No, 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 no. I couldn't. No, it's I couldn't. fine. I'll call someone. No, you haven't got a phone. Well, I'll just use a phone. They took your wallet. Please, I'd like to help. I'd like to help. Not everybody. Excuse me. Right. Excuse me. You here to sign the sex offenders register? Yeah. I used to make stuff like that when I was a kid. Not, not lipstick, but you know, stuff. I was gutted. You know, first thoughts in three years, but I wasn't going to let that ruin everything. You know, fuck what happened at the police station. People. Have... You know, I know the drill. So. So I grabbed what I could and went to the till and uh, got the um, autumn shades. Five nine five. Let's talk to the checkout checkout girl. And I was just saying, do you like working in a chemist? Extend the avoidance strategy. Do my times tables. One eight eight two eight sixteen three eight twenty four. Then I did a full on escape drill. I just gave her a tenner and left. I didn't wait for the change. You said your first thoughts in three years, Charlie. What kind of thoughts? What kind of thoughts, Charlie? She was shoplifting. Lipstick. But I didn't say anything. Why don't get involved? Not with kids. What kind of thoughts, Charlie? I saw her, the younger one, and I thought some girls. Some girls. Yeah, you know, it's nothing to do with what they look like, whether or not they're pretty or anything like that. It's not that. It's, uh... You know, you look at them and you think... You feel a connection. You think, she's special. (laughs) 
And then I thought I was special once. And that's as far as it went. What made you special, Charlie? My dad. My dad used to tell me. He used to come into my room and tell me. And did you want the girl in the chemist to be special to you? Listen, the woman in the police station, she made you feel ashamed, alienated, angry. Those are triggers, Charlie. But you didn't give in. Instead, you thought about what it means, what it meant to you to be abused, and that's victim empathy. I mean, the girl and the chemist, you felt desire, but you also felt compassion. You said so yourself. She reminded you of... of you. You met the challenge head on, Charlie. You used the strategy, and it worked. It worked? Yeah, it worked. An offence-free future is not something you can achieve on your own. Support from and accountability to trusted individuals is the key to your success. Waste management. You mean bin man? I mean a waste management professional. You mean bin man? The pay's good and you get plenty of free time. Is that it? What did you expect? Equal opportunity. Welcome to the real world, Charlie. There's nothing wrong with waste management. <laughs> we'll be up to our necks in chip without it. Bloody silly name. I should do something about it, really. Friends call me Rudy. Rudy. Charlie. Pleased to meet you, Charlie. Shaky days. First few days out of prison, I remember well. Pressed to the limits of human endurance. Still, there's light at the end of the tunnel, Charlie. Hope so. I'm living testimony. A year of residential rehab, got my own business off the ground. Moved into my own place, stuck it out long enough to call it home. Got my health, and I've got this place. Come here for the daily sessions and, of course, the garden. You any good with long-handled shears? therapists may be available to some. It is recommended that you share your recovery with a friend. Making friends with other sex offenders is I mean, I'm not discounting you making an effort to fit in, but it's not going to take you forwards. 
okay? Making contact with the outside world is what really matters. What if the outside world doesn't want to know? I mean, what am I supposed to do? Even, even if I met a girl, a woman, what am I, I'm under curfew. So come 11 o'clock, what am I going to do? I want to bring her back here. You know, and how am I supposed to be myself? To actually tell someone, this is who I am and this is what I've done. I haven't been touched in six years. Look, don't worry. If women my own age did it for me, I wouldn't be here, would I? When was the last time you slept with a woman your own age? Seven, eight years ago. I imagined I was doing it to her little sister. Then you didn't give it a chance, did you? Well, who's going to give me a chance, Emma? You? Do you sleep with me knowing what you know? Well, that's an inappropriate question. I wouldn't sleep with you because I wouldn't sleep with a patient, full stop. There are boundaries. There are boundaries. Boundaries. Right, thank you very much. That's the encouragement. No, you wouldn't sleep with me for the same reason that anyone else wouldn't. It's never going to happen. Probably, you know, I'm just trying to get Yeah. Do you have a current CV with you? Yeah. Yeah. Blow it, Billy. It's not exactly the first time, is it? Yeah. And that, that's what I told him. He's hopeless. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Can I help you? Charlie. Charlie Webb. Yeah? No, I'm just here for the... I'm here for the waste management job. I oh, know. <laughs> Hang on. I just signed you in, Mr Webb. Yeah, I know. I know. So, if there's nothing else I can help you with, would you take a seat, please? It's nice to meet you. Now. Sorry. Do you want to go for a drink after work? What? Yeah, not to a, not, not to a pub. Somewhere nice. You know? Do you like Italian food? I'm actually a quarter Italian. My auntie was from Naples. Just sit. Thanks to the people of the United Kingdom for saving their lives of 10,000 children who fled from Nazi persecution. Whosoever saves a single soul is credited as though they had saved the whole world.
tabloids. They'd have a stone to death if they could. Or bring back public hanging. We're still God's creatures, they forget that. Judge not, lest ye be judged. Still, at this precise moment, nothing precludes us from an honest pint. Can we just, uh... Can we just sit here for a bit? Thanks. 1966. Yuri Gagarin, Russian cosmonaut, first bloke in space, right? Right. Landed in the middle of a French vineyard, this is true. Now, the local mayor's totally over the moon, and he renames the wine Yuri Gagarin. And years later, this bloke's camping in Provence and gets plastered on Yuri with an old pal of his. They think they've struck gold. They smuggle 300 bottles back into the UK, spend a month traipsing around the off-licenses, trying to flog it as a novelty wine. Trouble is, it tasted horrible. So now they're stuck with 300 bottles of god-awful plonk that nobody wants. What did they do? Drank it. Last I heard, they were trying to set up a mobile noodle bar on a ski slope in Switzerland. Point being, be careful who you go into business with. Pint? Uh, I'm not supposed to drink. Oh, come on, Charlie. One pint won't hurt you. No. Relax, Charlie. Nobody knows us. Not here. No one can live in fear, Charlie. No, it's not that. What then? What if there's no hope? Do you mean what I think you mean? What do you think I mean? That you're having, um... doubts. Doubts? Urges. No. Because urges are easily dealt with, Johnny. South side of the common by the public loot. Young boys and girls from the local care home selling themselves. They're damaged goods, Charlie. Better them than a friend or neighbor's daughter. What do you think he told me? Outright, just confess like that. Well, maybe he wanted to get caught. Maybe he knew that you'd report him, Charlie. Report him? Well, I'll have to pass on what Mr. Hamilton told you to the police. I mean, surely you understand that. What'll happen to him? They'll question him search his home, and if they find any evidence, he'll be re-arrested. Well, they'll send him back to prison? Yes. <sighs> well, maybe that's, maybe that's the best place for him.
only place for him, maybe. No one is above slipping up, Charlie. Not even you. God, I thought we were clear on that. We are clear. Are we? Because you don't seem clear. You seem angry and condemning. He was a fucking fraud. Listen, maybe you'd be a little less angry with Rudy if you were being more realistic about your own difficulties. What difficulties? This is never going to be easy, Charlie. Ever. Not for Rudy and not for you. Tuesday, 24th October, day 31. I can't afford to hate them back. What would you be doing, Charlie, if I wasn't here to talk to you? You have to prepare yourself for the outside world, Charlie, sooner or later. I mean, that's what you want, isn't it? That's the whole point of this place. Yeah, but um, I, uh, I'm not ready for the outside world, which is why I'm here, isn't it? You're readier than most, Charlie. I don't know what I'll do if they shut this place down. It's home for me. I've got nowhere else to go. Nowhere safe, nowhere I can fit in. At the centre, I'm surrounded by people who are here to help take that away. All I've got is a few therapy sessions and a probation officer, and I don't think that's enough. I don't know what can happen out there. They might put my picture in the paper, I could end up on the run, or even living near a school. Thursday, November 2nd. Eight days in a home office B&B. Eight days in the real world. And counting.
Neighbors. Asylum seekers. It's some sort of mistake. It's temporary. Who's temporary? Me or them? You want to complain? Complain to the Home Office. Yeah, I will. In writing. How's the new job? It's good. How many hours a week? Sixty. I'm doing both shifts. I keep myself busy that way I can hold out. I can hold out. Hold out for what? For the centre to reopen. Won't happen. You don't know that. I've got two kids, Charlie. Do you think I'd want a sex offenders rehabilitation centre at the bottom of my street? Who would? There's circles of support. Christians. So? My dad was a Christian. There's a spot opened up at a hostel, so we'll be moving you soon. Well, I'm settled in now, so... I thought you were going to complain in writing. Well, it wouldn't do any good, would it? Anyway, I'm fine where I am. What about your neighbour's kids? I, I haven't touched my neighbour's kids or any other kids, and I'm not planning to. Thanks for the vote of confidence. I don't see anything to be confident about. Anyway, I've met someone, a woman, a grown-up, someone I work with. Tell me about her. She, um, knows who I am and, um, knows all about me, what I did, and, um, she still believes in me. And that's the kind of person she is. What's her name? Emma. You're lying to me. Fuck you!
Hurry up, love. Right, that's your lot, I'm afraid. Next week, we'll talk about this then, yeah? No. No, I won't be there. If you miss I, a meeting... I, I, I know what a probation order is, OK? And I know what happens if I break it. You fancy another stint in prison, Charles? I told you, I just told you, just now, that there's nowhere else to go. There's nowhere safe. Are you being threatened? No, no, no. It's not for me. It's for them. For who? It's for kids. Charlie, this isn't how it works. It's exactly how it works. This is exactly how it works. I don't turn up. You call the police. The judge sends me back to prison. I'm giving you a head start.
Charlotte. No. Why is this one? Why is why is this not working? I'm not sure. They said it's broken. Maybe they should. Um, they should kind of. I'm waiting for my friend. She's on that one. Oh, I was nearly sick right back there. It's my bad, dad isn't it? went all three, and he really? nearly was sick as yeah. well. Yeah. It's really bad, isn't it? It's good though. I'll go on out with you if you want. Nice. See you later. Pleased to meet you. How old are you? 26. How old do you think I am? 17. What about her? Kelly? Kelly? 16. Bollocks. Went to the Silver Dot Centre the other day. They wouldn't even let her into a 15. Fuck off. It's true. It was an 18. She's lying. I am not. Show us your tits then. She ain't got none. Got an arsenal awesome there. Too many damn bars. Why are you being such a bitch?
You're prettier than she is. She knows it. That's all. That's all it is. I thought it was supposed to be a fun fair. It is. We're not having much fun, are we? Things for me. You're always trying to spoil things for me. Fine. <laughs> Good, isn't he? Yeah, he's cute. I like him. We should name him. What are you going to name him? Charlie. Oh. <laughs> trick for Her Majesty. Any of you stiffs got a pack of cards? Are you on crack? All the best people are a little bit mad. <laughs> That's what my old mum used to say. Except she said it more like this. All the best people are potty, Charlie. Potty! <laughs> what about your mum? Bitch. Wait. Oh, yeah. Bet she's not. But she's a diamond daughter like you. Must be. How about, um, a milkshake or some chips? All right. <laughs> Which? Both. Both. <laughs> pineapple milkshake and chips twice. How do you know I like pineapple? Because I'm a genius. <laughs> Lucky guess. Does you've got no earlobes? People with no earlobes like pineapples. It's a well-known fact. You seriously never been to the seaside? I can't swim. No? No? You? Yeah. Backstroke, breaststroke, butterfly crawl. <laughs> Backstroke, breaststroke, butterfly crawl. <laughs> no, I was a junior champion. And then I was a swimming coach. You could teach me. Yeah, I could if you like.
See, the thing about lighthouses is uh, that they have a very important job. They do it all on their own. Warning people, day and night, not to come too close. You mean ships and stuff? Ships and stuff. May not make much sense now, but one day it will. Thanks. For everything. Anytime. Can I see you again? Would you like that? Yeah. Do you have any um, clients? No, just one. Just large ones. Oh. And I need some bleach as well. Bleach? Yes, just under there if you might. Yeah. Dear Michaela, thank you for a brilliant time. You're a really amazing girl, and I think swimming lessons are a great idea. But the truth is, I'm not allowed to go near children. That's the golden rule. It's funny. I know you'll never get this letter, but in the end I just couldn't help writing it anyway. Things don't make much sense to me until I write them down. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say, really. Be good. Charlie.
If your life has been affected by events similar to those portrayed, call our 24-hour recorded information line on 08456 041444. Lines are open round the clock on 08456 041444.